Now we're having a very interesting guest in the studio, a very, very inspiring conversation. I am so inspired by her strength, her drive, and she basically has been a fighter and is a conqueror and a survivor of cancer. Her name is Tosi Ogumbanjo, and she's coming to share with us her journey. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Olive. I'm really excited I'm having you. I really like stories like this, stories that inspire hope of people getting to share their journeys and their struggles. So I, I'd like to start off first with, you know, the point where your hair fell off. I'm starting with this because at the start of the show, I spoke about self-confidence right. and things you can do to boost your self-confidence. So give us an insight into how you felt when your hair totally fell off and how you were able to deal with it. Wow. Okay, like that was the scariest thing, losing my hair, because I've loved my hair all my life. I had long, lo lovely, beautiful hair. So the first thing was I used to wear wigs to just hide it because I just was not ready to go out there and look bald. And so one day my daughter, she saw my hair, you know, without my wig and she laughed and she was patting my head like, you know, so it kind of gave me a freedom. Like after that moment where she laughed at my head, I just, I just was really open. I just was like, you know, I'm just going to go out there. So what I would do is I'd always make sure that I did my eyebrows well. Other than that, you know, it was just, it was just. It was good did to you, be alive. How bad did the hair? Okay, that's a picture of you. Yes, that was when I lost my hair. I lost my hair so fast. I actually thought that it's supposed to take a while, but immediately after the first treatment, a few weeks, I lost all my hair. So when it started falling off in batches, I just took clippers and shaved it off myself. For me, I felt like you should always be in front of anything that seems to scare you. So for me, I was like, I'm taking it, you know, I'm taking the boldness to just shave off my head. That way I know that I'm the one that shaved this hair as opposed to the hair fell off, you know. And I kept the hair. Oh, what a lovely narrative. <laughs> you decided to basically be in front of anything yes. that scares you. I've taken mm -hmm. that and I would remember that. Yeah. Now let's go way back to the time when you found out you had cancer. What were some of the symptoms you saw and how did you discover that you had cancer? Okay, basically, um, it was a shocking thing because I had a boil under my arm, which, of course, you know, like any normal boil, it should go in a few weeks. So this boil was continuous. And so my husband said, look, it's been over, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks. So let's check it out. So we went to the doctor. And they said, it looks like this boil is not just a normal boil, so we need to run some tests. So we ran tests here in Nigeria, and he did some, um, you know, sent things to the lab. And when he came back, he said, this definitely looks like cancer. So, um, but from that point, we just said, but there's nothing in the, you know, chest area, so how can this be cancer, you know? And we just thought we'll go for a second opinion. And when we did to get a second opinion, they said exactly the same thing. So it was shocking for me because there's no cancer in my family, um, not even... I don't know, generations, we've never heard of cancer. And, you know, we, I do my checkups. I, I feel like I'm healthy. I exercise. I'm not overweight. So it was a bit, like, strange. Like, where is this coming from? So that took a while for us to actually accept. So at, at that point, what was your immediate reaction? What was the first thing you said? The first thing I said was, no, this cannot be happening to me. This, I mean, I'm just going to go somewhere else. Another doctor is just going to tell me it's a joke. And, you know, I just believe that this cannot be my portion, like people say, yes. That's what I, that was the first thing. Now, after that period where you got a second opinion that, you know, it was actually cancer, what was the next step? So they said, um, my, the best thing is to take it out. I mean, take out the, you know, any of the lumps and let's really test that. So at least when we test what we bring out, you can know for real if this is something that um, is what type of cancer it is, what type of treatment. And so I had to do a surgery, which was scary for me because I don't like to go into the hospital. So they did a surgery. It didn't take too long. And then they said, let's sit and wait for the results. And then I got a dreaded call. They just called me one day. I was like, you know what? Cancel any plans you're having. You're not going to be able to leave the country for the next six months. And that really scared me because my children and my husband were not with me. So I was just, you know, I was with my mom, who, of course, was just my prayer warrior and just, you know, standing in the gap for me. But it was a really scary thing because I just, I thought that I was going to die. I thought, God, I'm so young. I haven't done anything with my life. You know, what am I going to, I just had, I had a, like a two-year-old. And I just thought, God, you know, she's so young. How can she live this life without a mother? You know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? That's where I was. Yeah. And what, what were the, some of the procedures you had to go through, through your treatment up yeah, until so this stage? The treatment was actually the scary thing. So I actually was okay when I didn't have to do the treatment. I didn't feel anything strange in my body. I would walk around. I felt a bit weak, but I don't think that that was really anything. It was when I started the treatment, that's when the scariness happened. As soon as I started chemotherapy, I lost all my hair. As in, that was the scariest part. Lost my eyebrows, hair everywhere, on my skin. It was just anywhere there was hair was gone. So 
Um, that's, that was scary. But um, after the treatment, I did that for four months and every two weeks. And so I would sit in the chemotherapy um, treatment room with all the other people getting the same treatment and would just sit there. It was one of the scariest ones where I had to put my hands in ice for about an hour, my hands and feet in ice blocks so that I wouldn't get nerve damage. So the treatment was very, very intense. And that was why I felt I was going to die from the treatment, not necessarily because I couldn't feel anything different which is why I urge people to check because you might not feel different about your body, but there's something inside that you're not aware of that is actually fighting. How, how well are we equipped in Nigeria to detect and to treat cancers? Now, you found out yours in Nigeria. Yes. And some people have said that, you know, they got checked in Nigeria, they got a clean bill of health, and then they went outside the country and discovered that yes, they had cancer. Yes. I think it depends on the hospitals you go to, the kind of doctors, because yes, people have said that, but they're very good doctors in Nigeria. It just depends on where you go. And always good to get a second or third opinion in whatever situation. Right, now still on this journey, you started having chemotherapy. There were yes. times you had to dip your hands and your feet in ice to mm -hmm. prevent nerve damage. Yeah. How was your husband taking all of this? Oh my goodness, my husband, my husband is a rock. Okay, so um, my husband was just amazing because he kept saying to me, Tosin, Greater is he that is in you. You're going to make it. You're going to survive this. God is with you. God is, you know, so I, at some point, you know, even I was like, God, I believe, I believe. But all these things I'm seeing are speaking against that belief. So are you sure I'm going to make, you know, I had all these times of questions. But my husband was always praying with me. I'd call him really ridiculous times of the night crying, like, I can't take this anymore. And, you know, he'd say, Tosin, calm down. Take a deep breath. You know, God is going to bring you through. You're going to come out. You're going to be victorious. So... I said to all my single friends, please marry godly men, you know, because there are times when you'll need someone to be able to stand in the gap for you. And he was totally that. And your mom, what role did your mom oh play? Oh, my goodness, my mom. My mom used to make me these really disgusting juices, you know, these ugu and I don't know, all kind of bitter leaf and weird things. Because for her, she believed that let's go natural as well while you're doing this treatment. Because in... Because your body loses so much, you need to replace it with so many good veggies. And so my mom would every morning make me a glass of some disgusting juices. <laughs> and also she was my rock. She was my prayer warrior. She was there standing in the gap. She was, you know, I never saw her cry, but I knew that she was hurting because she would, she would say, oh God, if, if this was you know, me, I'm older, take me. But this is this young girl that's going through this journey. God pull her through and we would always take um, Holy Communion just before the treatment and we would say, God, you know, you said we'll eat, drink poison and it wouldn't harm us. So we would go there believing that, look, this medicine is not going to harm my body, but I'm going to get better and we'll feel better. I'm sure that at the point when you started this treatment, there were some lifestyle modifications that you had to you oh, know, yes. go through. So what oh, yes. were they? Okay, so first of all, I had to take a lot of things off my diet because I love sugar, I love chocolates, I love sweet things, zap. So I had to cut out all of the sweetness and just focus on the healthy food. So Why the did you greens, cut it out? Well, because they feel that um, sugar is not good for your body, that your body, um, you know, reacts wrongly to sugar, to things that are too sweet. I've heard that before, yes. that cancers actually do feed on sweet sugar. Stuff. That's what they say. So for me, I was just like, better to be safe than sorry. And like I always say, I feel that the good food is actually the medication in advance of your sickness. So if I, you know, eating the right foods is actually what the medicine is, in other words. So yeah, I would, um, I stopped eating red, like beef reduced it, um, focused mostly on fish and veggies and changed my oils, changed my salt and all those other bouillon cubes and all those kind of things, focused on all natural food. And you still do all that yes, now? Yes, I do. I really? Do. Yes. It's harder now though, but I'm still doing it. All right, so let's look at your journey. Um, at, at what point did you um, have a clean bill of health? At what point? Yay, okay, so... Um, the first step was, you know, of course, they say every three months I had to go for a checkup. So this whole journey and everything just finished April. So, you know, April, April was not too far away. So after April, I went for my three-month checkup, which were like, oh, you look good. Everything is fine. I went for my next checkup in August, and they were like, wow, you know, you're, you're looking good. You're doing well. So just keep praying, keep believing, and keep doing all the right things. And we're praying with you. We keep Yay. believing with you that you know, this will be the end to cancer yes. and that it would never come back again. Amen. But Amen. I'd, I'd like you to encourage somebody who probably has just found out that they have cancer or that their loved one has cancer. And they feel like it's the end of the world, like you did. You felt it was the end of the world. Yes. You thought you were going to die. But look at you. Yeah, so maybe yeah. you should encourage someone who has or knows someone who has cancer. Okay, awesome. So yes, um, it's interesting because there are a few people that I've actually been talking to right now that are going through this situation. Um, they found out and their families are also devastated. But one thing I'll tell you is that if you believe 
you will see you will see it come to an end. You know, it sounds scary, especially when you hear the news and you're just like, okay, it's over for me. But if you just keep praying, just trust God that He'll pull you through, and you know. Listen to what the doctor says. So there's medical facts. Also listen to what God says. There's spiritual facts. So you have to pray with those two and just kind of juggle. And um, yeah, you just keep believing. Thank keep you believing. so much for sharing your journey with us. Yeah. And we look forward to you having a clean bill of health. Yeah. Five years, hey. 10 years, yes. 20, 50. Yes. Yes. How many more years do you want to do? <laughs> as many as possible. <laughs> okay. I, I know you also started a vlog to share your experiences and to yes. encourage people. How yes. do people get to see the yeah, clips? So, so what, what, I, um, what I'm doing right now is like on Instagram, Tosin OG, that's T-O-S-I-N-O-G-E-E. -E. Like people chat me up, people that are going through the journey. Like I said, I actually have about six people that I'm working with different parts of the world just to encourage them and to share my journey and my nutrition, what the nutritionist told me to eat, all the things I did, and just so it makes the journey easier for them. Very true. Fantastic. Thank you so much for Yay. joining us. Thank you for sharing your story with us. And if you're out there, you know, you have you've been diagnosed with cancer, you know someone who has, you might want to reach out to Tosin. Everybody does need a hand to hold. Yes. She has people to hold and support oh, her. Yes. And she's volunteering to hold your hands through this journey. Yes. If there's one sickness in the world, I could hope that would never come again. Yes. It will be cancer, mm -hmm. all sorts of cancer. Because yes. you don't even know what you do that causes it. I'm telling or you. Or what you wouldn't do that would cause it. Or how to tell you that it's gone. You know, exactly. That's scary thing. So it's just, it's just really it's like, it's very unpredictable. Yeah. unpredictable. It's scary, it's overwhelming. Yes. But I'm really excited that you're a victor yes. and you're a survivor. Yay. And because you conquered this, many people out there can conquer this too. That's Thank right. you so much for joining us. To enjoy more of these our Ogunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.